This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 460, an excerpt from the book, I Am Keats, Escape Your Mind and Free Yourself, by Tom Asacker, and I'm Justin Mollick. This is the podcast where I act as a personal narrator for you, for free, usually from blogs covering personal development and minimalism, from popular authors like Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, Leo Babout of Zen Habits, James Clear, and more. But sometimes I bring books to you also, and that's the case today. But really quick, I wanna mention another podcast that I'd recommend because there's an episode I think you'd like. That's episode 640 of the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. I'll tell you why at the end of the episode. For now, just remember to subscribe to the Creating Wealth Show and you can get more info at oldpodcast.com slash wealth. But back to today's special episode, I'm gonna read a little bit of the intro from this book, I Am Keats, because I really like it. And then some of the first chapter. So I'm skipping around a little, but it should be pretty clear. Again, that book is I Am Keats by Tom Asacker. I'll give you some more info about him right after the reading and make sure you listen all the way through to the end because I will be giving away this copy of the book too. But for now, let's get right to the excerpt as we optimize your life. An excerpt from the book I Am Keats, Escape Your Mind and Free Yourself by Tom Asacker. Introduction. Quote, we are all living in cages with the door wide open. George Lucas. Lock and Key. Budapest-born Eric Weiss was one of seven children. He arrived in the United States in his mother's arms in 1878. 22 years later, Harry Handcuff Houdini was baffling police in Scotland Yard. He had let go of what he was and became the world's most famous escape artist. Houdini boasted he could break out of any jail cell in the world in less than one hour. And every time he was tested, he would escape in just a few short minutes. But one time, things didn't go as Houdini had planned. As the story goes, a small town in the British Isles built a new lockup, and they haughtily invited Houdini to come give their showpiece a try. As usual, Houdini accepted the challenge without hesitation. He arrived and strolled into the cell pregnant with confidence, and once the door was closed and he was left alone, Houdini went to work. He coughed up a special lockpick, quickly released his handcuffs, and honed in on the door. But there was something strange about this particular lock. 30 torturous minutes dragged on and Houdini was rattled. After 60, Houdini was crestfallen and drenched in sweat. Exhausted, he collapsed against the heavy metal door and it swung open. Houdini was astonished to discover that the door was never locked, at least not in objective reality. It was only locked in his mind. There's a quote often attributed to the great Houdini. My mind is the key that sets me free. Minds can certainly be keys, but more often, They are locks. The lock. You and I are like Houdini. We're confined in mental prisons of our own creation and the locks of those cells are the stories we tell ourselves, stories that are make-believe. We make them up, or others make them up for us, and eventually we come to believe them. We call those inherited and learned accounts of life reality. Do you feel held back by your reality, by the stories you're telling yourself about yourself and your life? I've been smothered by mine on more than a few occasions, locked up in a stifling cell of my own creation. So far, I've managed to find a way out, and thankfully, it was never a Houdini-like public spectacle. During my most recent lockdown, around three years ago, I felt like a caged animal. I found myself pacing back and forth, seriously stuck, and I had no idea where to turn or what to do. There, I've said it. You wouldn't have noticed, no one did, but it came over me like a dark cloud. I don't think it was depression. I didn't feel sad or worthless. I felt spiritless and confused. I'd spent a lifetime studying psychology, philosophy, mythology, brain science, human decision-making, blah, 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 and I could not make a meaningful decision to save my life. One, quote, the blizzard of the world has crossed the threshold and has overturned the order of the soul. Leonard Cohen. A little less Coleridge. The romantic poet John Keats lived his short life with intense passion, moved by his senses and imagination. He longed to find beauty in a world of suffering, and his writing is a radiant reflection of those dreams. Keats was also a great admirer of Shakespeare. He once described the bard's genius as negative capability. Quote, At once it struck me what quality went to form a man of achievement, especially in literature, and which Shakespeare possessed so enormously. I mean negative capability. That is, when man is capable of being in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable reaching after fact and reason, unquote. Uninhibited, open, without judgment, 
giving oneself fully to the process, to that which is being experienced, without the need to figure it all out or the desire for gain. Sadly, that sentiment is antithetical to today's goal-obsessed culture, an anxiety-fueled zeitgeist that is sucking the spirit out of people, and which I'm pretty sure was the crux of my angst. For I often found myself wondering, why do it? What's its purpose? What's it going to accomplish? Driven instinctively by my insatiable desire to understand, to connect the dots, just like another romantic poet, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who obsessively searched for the truth of the human condition and the mysteries of the natural world. Keats saw Coleridge's compulsion as narrowly subjective. Keats believed that the inspirational power of beauty was more important than the quest for meaning. It has taken me quite a while to wake up to it, assuming I actually have, but Keats was right. In our dogged pursuit of knowledge and goals, we have forgotten to live, to subdue self-concern and identify with others, to open up fully to here and now experiences, and to embrace our empathetic impulses and imaginative creativity. So I'm gonna try to stop connecting all the dots. It's really hard. Stop trying to predict an unknowable future, even harder. And instead, be a connected and passionate part of the present. For as Goethe made clear, What is important in life is life and not the result of life. Here's to life, a little less Coleridge, a lot more Keats. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, I Am Keats, Escape Your Mind and Free Yourself by Tom Asacker. I hope you enjoyed that, I did. Tom is a fascinating guy. He's an artist, writer, inventor, and philosopher. He writes, teaches, and speaks about new practices and ideas for success, perfect for this podcast. You can find more about him and this book at IamKeats.com. Keats is spelled K-E-A-T-S. I have it linked in this episode's description and at oldpodcast.com. Now, I don't want to give away this book, but I promised I would. So if you want a chance to win, I'll make this really easy. Just make sure you're on my weekly newsletter mailing list at oldpodcast.com by tonight. I'll raffle it off to someone on there at midnight. And I'll only give it to someone who's actually opening my emails just to spice it up a little. And now I mentioned the Creating Wealth show earlier. There's an episode I think you might like. It's episode 640. He's done a lot of episodes. It features Dan Millman, who wrote a really popular book called Way of the Peaceful Warrior, a book that changes lives. I had to read this in college, actually. I think it was a sociology class. Anyway, Jason Hartman brings him on his show, and it's definitely worth the listen. They talk about the four purposes of life, the difference between your career and a calling, discovering your life's path, and a lot more. You can find The Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman in pretty much any podcast app wherever you're listening to this show. And you can find him and more info online at oldpodcast.com slash wealth. You can subscribe to The Creating Wealth Show for a lot more content. And again, check out episode 640 to hear the author of a book that I really enjoyed in college. Again, that's The Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. And I think that covers everything for today. Don't forget to join the weekly newsletter by tonight if you want a chance to win. I am Keats. That's at oldpodcast.com and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together will optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's O-L-D podcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.